everyone, it's Carolyn and I'm here with another video. Today is going to be much like the video I posted previously. Today's video, however, is going to be about the top three graphic novels that I read this year. By the way, all three comics that I'm going to talk about today are all published by Image. I think most of the graphic novels that I read are from Image. They publish like the best graphic novels and comics, I, in my opinion, but I could just be biased. So I'm just going to jump straight into it. The first graphic novel I wanted to share with you guys is the graphic novel Monstrous by Marjorie Liu and Sana Tekada. And honestly, this is one of the most beautiful graphic novels that I've ever read. I mean, it's hard to say but the first thing that actually caught my eye, at least on the shelves, was the cover and like how it was illustrated. So right away I was really drawn to it. However, I was a bit skeptical because I was wondering if the story would be as good as how it looked. And man, I was surprised. I did read a few reviews that gave this book kind of an average rating. So I was a bit skeptical going into it, even though I really loved like how it looked. I was still a little worried that I might not actually enjoy it as much as I wanted to. However, fortunately, I ended up really enjoying this book. So Monstrous is kind of set in this high sort of grimdark fantasy world with steampunk influences. The weapons and like the architecture of like the buildings and stuff in this graphic novel, it definitely has like an eastern influence and it's just really gorgeous. I can show you like a few kind of pages and this graphic novel definitely it looks as good on the inside as it is on the outside it is beautiful anyway in the story our main protagonist Mika Hafulf um, I'm not sure if I'm saying her first name correctly she's a part of this world where there's a great war between the humans and the Karniks and the Karniks are these uh, people with animalistic features sometimes they can be fully animal I'm not sure so Karniks have special magical abilities which the humans try to harvest. So in the society there are these people called the Chimera who are like an elite group of people who experiment on like captured Akarnics and try to extract like magical properties from them. It's pretty gross. So Mika is an Akarnic and, and her sister has been captured by the humans so she tries to infiltrate into where the humans are to find her sister. So right when you're introduced to Mika, she's been sold off to one of these elite groups and throughout the story she's kind of struggling on her identity. She's trying to find out what happened to her mother. And also Mika has this ancient monster inside of her who inhabited her body when she was a child that she's trying to control. So she's also in this grey area. So it's crazy. There's like all sorts of diverse characters. There's these group of witches and there's the Chimera and the Arcanics. It's kind of like a very long action kind of adventure in a steampunk fantasy world. It is actually pretty graphic. It does have violence and gore in it. In the back it says that it's kind of steampunk horror, which I can agree. Like some stuff that happens can be a bit gruesome and horrific, but at the same time it's kind of beautiful the way it's illustrated from the color palette to the way the characters are kind of drawn. It kind of reminds me of an anime or manga. It's colorful but at the same time the color palette is a little softer and it has kind of a gray grayish undertone to all the colors. Yeah, you kind of get what I'm saying. The author and the illustrator has created this very beautiful yet terrifying world full of danger and mystery and I highly recommend this book. It's definitely one of my favorite reads. I am going to continue to follow through this series as it goes. So the next graphic novel series you probably already know. It's kind of been a bit popular whether it's in booktube or like on the internet. I've seen it a lot online. Definitely there is a buzz to it. So the series is Paper Girls. And I think this is by Brian K. Vaughan. I'm not too familiar with the other people, but Brian K. Vaughan is the writer that wrote the series Saga, which I'm sure a lot of people out there are familiar with, which I personally enjoyed. However, I've kind of lost interest in Saga. It's 
gotten a bit too wacky and like the story has gone off the rails a bit. The saga is really, it's a science fiction, mind-boggling adventure with all these crazy weird stuff. However, I think Paper Girls is definitely a little toned down, but it still has pretty wacky science fiction elements to it. So it does have that weirdness, but I think I like Paper Girls a lot more than Saga. Oh. And this is just, oh my gosh, let's just have a look at each volume. So this is volume one, um, this is volume two, and this is volume three. As you can see, it's very vibrant in color. Let me just show you, like the color palette is very vibrant throughout the entire series. Definitely eye-catching, but what I like about this series it captures kind of the 80s vibe. The story begins with these group of paper girls who deliver newspapers and one day they kind of come across this kind of thing that seems otherworldly and that kind of propels the story and where these characters go. It is set in the 80s and it kind of intrigued me because it definitely has that Stranger Things vibe. At the same time, it's mixed with sci-fi, time travel, otherworldly <laughs> adventures. So it's really an interesting read. Almost like coming of age, but at the same time, these girls need to go through this crazy adventure just to get back into their own timeline. So it definitely has a mixture of drama with a bit of science fiction, well heavily on the science fiction aspects, and it's definitely a coming of age story of these girls. The vibrancy of the graphic novel itself is just very pleasing to the eye and definitely makes it a enjoyable reading experience. It's just a really entertaining read. So yeah, I highly recommend this series. So the final graphic novel series that I have for you today is Descender, and this is by Jeff Lemire and illustrated by Dustin Nguyen. The writer Jeff Lemire is the writer for another graphic novel series that I really enjoyed, uh, which was Sweet Tooth. I'm not sure if I mentioned Sweet Tooth in videos in the past, but that graphic novel series is pretty underrated. I don't hear about it much, but it was one of my favorite reads. When I picked up Descender, I kind of didn't really realize that it was by Jeff Lemire. When I found out that it was, it kind of made sense that I liked it. It's by a writer who wrote a graphic series novel that I really liked in the past, so I was definitely even more excited when I found out, even though like it clearly says Jeff Lemire there. But I just picked it up because I did hear a lot about Sendai. So again, I'm gonna start off by complimenting the art style of this graphic novel series. It's definitely a lot different from the other two that I've mentioned. This one's a lot brighter, whilst just say Monstrous had more darker undertones. I mean, oh, well that's black. Very bright, and it's also done by watercolor, which is so, so beautiful. I'm not sure if you can see it definitely has more of a sketchy kind of style, unlike in Monstrous where it had more darker, more greyish undertones. This one is straight up really bright. It does use a lot of black, but what can you do? <laughs> it's set in space. So Descendo is set in a post-robotic world. The humans have now gone kind of intergalactic. There's a vast majority of different characters in this. So the humans created robots and used them and really relied on them. Then one day, these really humongous planet-sized robots called the Harvesters went around the galaxy just laying wastage wherever they found life form. After the Harvesters came and really wrecked havoc. After that incident, robots have become outlawed and a lot of humans and other life around the galaxy really fear robots. And 10 years after this incident is when our main story begins. So Tim21 is a companion robot who was assigned to this family to be the son of the family's kind of sibling. And one day he wakes up with all the humans from this planet that he was on all gone. He wakes up alone on this planet without realizing that robots are outlawed. So what I've realized that Jeff Lemire does best is he's someone that really works 
on his characters and make sure they're fully developed even if they're not like the main or central characters he really delves into the backstory and where they've come from there is again kind of a mystery aspect to the story because you're trying to find out what it is that Tim 21 is hiding deep within um, that he, he himself isn't aware of and again it's like a crazy adventure and there are moments where it's touching and sad but overall it's less depressing than Sweet Tooth was but yeah this definitely has become one of my favorite graphic novels so yeah that is the top three graphic novels that I've read this year I definitely wanted to introduce you to a few more graphic novels which you may or may not have heard of there are definitely tons of graphic novels out there that are really good but these are some of my favorites so yeah that's it for today guys and I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time bye